In the midst of a crowd marches a little soldier, though she does not know it yet. You stand there, unable to express the fury pent up inside you. Anyway, there's no need. The screaming people swarming around you portray it well enough with their death threats. Her small figure is surrounded by four large white men. She is barely visible from where you stand, but nevertheless conspicuous, because all the rage of the crowd is hurtling towards her. Ruby Bridges was born in Tylertown, Mississippi, in 1954, the same year that Brown vs. the Board of Education was decided. When she was four years old, she and her family moved to New Orleans, Louisiana. Her mother decided that she wanted Ruby to have a good education, and that going to a white school was the only way to get it. The test that Ruby took to gain admittance to the white school was designed to resist federal desegregation by making it so difficult that no black child would be able to pass. Ruby was one of only six black children in New Orleans to be deemed intelligent enough to go to a white school, and so became one of the first black children to desegregate in the South. Ruby was the only black child to attend William France Elementary School. On her first day of kindergarten, she entered the school and watched as white families withdrew all of their children from the school. A large mob greeted her with threats as severe as poison every day, even though she was escorted by U.S. Marshals. Screaming. Every day they were there, and they were screaming and shouting. There were days when they would show up and they would have this box in their hand. The box was actually a coffin. And it was a baby's coffin, and they would put this black doll inside of it. So those days, I remember being really afraid. I was um, frightened of the box, and I used to have nightmares about the box. You know, they would say, oh, we're going to hang her, we're going to poison her. There was only one teacher at the school, Barbara Henry, who was willing to teach Ruby. The young girl was in a classroom by herself and suffered from the loneliness of being separated from the other children, even when some of them came back to school. Even when Mrs. Henry was finally able to have Ruby in a class with other students for some of the day, it was not the same. I finally had an encounter with another little boy that was attending the school. And uh, I remember trying to play with him and him looking at me and saying, I can't play with you. you know, my mom said not to play with you because you're a nigger. And the minute he said that, it all sort of made sense. It was extremely long. That was the, I think, the worst part about it. Being six, not having any friends, whatever playing I did, I did with Mrs. Henry in my classroom. Ruby's courage showed the world how entrenched racism was. Her parents lost their jobs and she received death threats at only the age of six. Even her sharecropper grandparents in Mississippi were turned off their land because of what she was doing. Everyone knew about it and therefore she and her family suffered. Despite all the blatant racism she encountered, she kept going to school. In fact, she never missed a day. She gave people courage, and her perseverance paid off. The next year, her school was completely desegregated, along with many schools around the country. Although her bravery was forgotten for a time, she showed the strength and resilience of children and their power to change what always had been and what looked like it always would be. Ruby Bridges Hall, she is now married, did not stop working for equality and good education. As an adult, she was able to revisit her past by going to her old school to volunteer. Her nieces went there and she was caring for them because her brother had been killed in drug-related violence. She created the Ruby Bridges Foundation to combat the old problem that she had been fighting as a child which still survived, racism. It also addresses parents' non-involvement in their children's education. Now, she and her old teacher, Mrs. Henry, travel the country, telling their story and standing up against racism. She and her story have become a symbol for doing what is right, even when it is tremendously difficult, and for fighting against the great inequalities that come out of racism. Ruby Bridges exposed how far-reaching racism was when she was persecuted for taking advantage of the right every American has to good schooling. Ruby made her voice heard even though she was a part of many groups that are severely underrepresented for the enormous roles that they have played in shaping America. African Americans, women, and children to name a few. The people who are well known are often wealthy white men, but they are not representative of all American history or of the American people. In the end, what is important is that Ruby Bridges is an American. The famous become famous because they change the lives of everyday Americans in some way. But they owe their celebrity or notoriety to ordinary Americans who made it possible, 
their impact will be null without seemingly ordinary Americans. Phoebe Bridges has had a great impact on American history, not because she is famous, politically powerful, athletic, or astoundingly beautiful, but because she was an ordinary American who did what an ordinary American does in an extraordinary way, go to school to get a good education and do it faithfully. By being an ordinary American, she participated in the patchwork of ordinary American lives that truly makes up the history of the United States. Phoebe Bridges brought the U.S. closer to justice through her extraordinary, ordinary life, the essence of the American dream and the American experiment of equality for all.